doing? Is anybody here in Charles Inn Cowboy Church? Good evening, yeah. Charles Inn. How y'all doing? Good evening. There we go. We have a few people. We hope you're tuning in with us on Facebook as well. And uh, we're going to try to kick this thing off. So Now I'm found I was blind But now I see And I 
This thing on? So y'all can hear me then. How are y'all doing this evening? Enjoying this weather? Hey, you know, it's, it's awesome. Uh, just want to welcome y'all here tonight and, and glad that everybody showed up. Uh, we're getting through the week. We need to get recharged a little bit. We need a little more, little more Jesus to keep us on the straight and narrow. I know I do. I get way out of whack if I don't get get a boost in the middle of the week. And uh, uh, Brother Sean is is not feeling well. It's the way I heard it. So um, we're gonna definitely want to pray for him. Um, and all anybody else that we have that's sick, I gotta. Got a few prayer requests here on the on the list, Miss Ann. Give me. Uh, we want to continue to pray for. Before we get started, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the blessings that you give us, Lord. Lord, we we uh we come to you tonight, Lord. We we just just want to worship you. We want to hear from you, Lord. Uh, uh, let tonight be all about you, Lord. I ask you to uh, um, just use. Use this uh, mess that you made here, Lord, and uh, to glorify you. Lord, I thank you for, uh, for letting us have worship leaders that come up here and, and uh, get our hearts prepared for what you got in store for us through music, Lord, using their talents to glorify you. It's all, it's all about you. You gave them what they're using. And, Lord, we give you praise for that. Lord, we just ask that we go into the, the, the words, the, the word, and we study that you would open our eyes up to what you have for us to see. And Lord, I just uh, thank you for all that you do. And I ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On, uh, on our prayer request list, we have uh, uh, Bob Christie. He's got a blood infection. We need to be praying for him. Uh, Tootie Munson, she's recovering from surgery. We want to lift her up. Uh, Miss Emma, Miss Emma Bolden, she's having problems breathing, and we just uh, we just want that to uh, um, we just want the Lord to touch her and give her comfort and open her lungs up and, and uh, be with her in a mighty way. And her husband Lyle, um, we ask for strength for him as he cares for Miss Emma. Uh, Mimi's family, we just want to continue to. Lift them up as they uh, they move forward um, after losing her. Um, you know, uh, we want to continue to pray for Bob Southern and Don Stresnicki. Um, Bob, as y'all know, has has a bone cancer. He he's in a lot of pain most of the time. Uh, he still he still keeps keeps coming up to to honor God and uh, we just want to keep him in our prayers keep him lifted up and uh, Don Stresnicki he was a, a, a gentleman that used to be faithful in Sunday school and and he come down with uh, an issue in his liver and I know uh, what that family's going through and uh, just ask y'all to keep him in your prayers. Uh, we want to uh, keep Philip Haskell in our prayers, uh, James Malden, uh, definitely Miss April and Brother Sean. Uh, we ask for healing and strength for them. Um, uh, Wayne Pollock, he, uh, he has a uh, carpal tunnel surgery uh, Friday. We want to lift him up in prayer. He'll have a quick and speedy recovery with no complications. Uh, Miss Patty Mansinger had a uh, 
unspoken prayer. Uh, there's a gentleman here that, that uh, had a prayer request that we pray for him, and you can just say anonymously uh, that he would have a closer walk with God. And so uh, that's something we are to pray for each other all on that one. But, but he, he had the foresight to know that he needed prayer for that, so we want to definitely honor that. Uh, Miss Ann, she's been having headaches. And we want to lift her up. We want to lift up our policemen, our first responders, our doctors, our nurses, all the people that are that are serving in a co one capacity or another. Uh, these folks jeopardize their lives trying to take care of others. And, and the word says that no greater love hath a man than he would lay down his life for his friends. And, and uh, we're so blessed by having those folks in our society. Um, you hear banter and rattle about defund the police. And I'm like, are you kidding? Who would want to do that? i tell you who wants to do that. Satan. He wants us to not have order. God is a God of order. Satan is the master of chaos. We see it running rampant in, in, our, in our country. And uh, I'm just tearing into it, so we better go on. <laughs> but we do want to lift up our leaders, our officials, uh, those folks who are standing for good and righteousness and trying to, trying to keep us from falling all the way in the pit. And I know they're clawing hard. And you know what, folks? When we look around and see all that, just remember this. As it is written, so shall it be. We are watching prophecy being fulfilled in, in many ways in a rapid fashion. It's coming at us full steam ahead. You know, it's been headed that way throughout the ages. But uh, somebody hit the fast forward button here lately. And I think that the Lord is going to let us be tried. He's going to let us go through trials. He wants to shake lukewarm Christians off the fence. He wants you to draw nearer to him. When he comes to get his bride, he don't want one that ain't real sure. He wants one that's committed. So we, we do want to lift up our leaders. Um, something about leaders. We've had presidents I didn't like. We've had presidents I love. But I ain't never missed praying for any of them. Because when we put it in perspective in John 19, Jesus is before Pontius Pilate, and Pilate tells him, why don't you defend yourself? Don't you know I have the authority to give you freedom or to give you death? And Jesus says to him, only because that authority was given to you from above. So, so when you... When, when uh, something happens and you see somebody in power and you're like, yeah, I don't like this, and you don't have to like it. But just know that God knows what he's doing. He's always in control. And there's no one he can't use. That's right. Pharaoh wasn't a, wasn't a believer. He wasn't a, a Christian. He wasn't a Jew. But he, in, in, a, in a moment after God had worked on him, through plagues and the death of his son. He told him, y'all just get out of here. Get out of Take what you want and get out of here. They plundered Egypt before they left. And then when he tried to change his mind, that didn't work because God had his hand on him. So we'll keep that in mind. Even the ones that don't believe, he can use them any way he wants to. Is there any other prayer request? Well, I get... Miss Kathy? That was Sheila Phillips. She, uh, she had some uh, stuff going on that was causing her problems, and then she's been doing some falling. Uh, you know, when we get weak and unstable on our feet, that, that can happen. But we want to lift her up in prayer that she would be healed and, and restored her health. 
Johnny? All right, we want to lift up David Mann. He's going in for some treatment for cancer. Uh, we just ask that the Lord would, would uh, heal him from that. We need to pray for uh, uh, Brother Everett Sam, no, we need to pray for unity of the church, and he's right. We do need to come together. We need to be strong. We need to, to uh, be like-minded. That I think the way the word put it, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We have to have love for one another. And, and, and uh, the church ought to be the warehouse where it's distributor, distributorship of love if if God lives within everyone in this room we've got so much love to give out you'll never run out that storehouse never runs dry love is a weird thing because the more you give the more you got that's a God thing any more Carla my cousin, my cousin Carla has cancer, and uh, they didn't give her a real good report. And uh, been been talking with her, and, and uh, just uh, Lord, when you when you have people close to you, or you're going through something, He kind of opens your eyes up to stuff that um, He wants you to pay attention to. So I'm gonna lift up my cousin on that. I'm missing it, Miss Shirley. Mending fences. mending fences, yes. We want to lift up mending fences. That's a a, a very beneficial uh, ministry. It's it's very necessary in the world we live in because we all got something going on. He is building Uh, we want to lift up Ian Fielding uh, and his family. Uh, Ms. Cheryl said they're they're in need of uh, prayer continually, and I, I know that uh, my brother Ian's health is not uh, all that great, uh, and his wife said no better. Ian. Patty? Uh, for Jamie and Roy and Jamerson, for, for their health, we sure shot up to over 500 in that big emergency room. She's in, was in rehab, and that's why his sugar went up. Um, he's been having on diabetics and has a passion to do things like that. And then she had just. Okay. Okay. We we'll pray for Carrie's job uh, situation and the Fergusons. We need to lift them up. Health, health uh, on both of them is messed up. I guess that's that's it. What is that last name again? Jones. Jones? Okay. All right. Michelle. Sure.
Praise. All right, and we, we continue to hear those stories where, where people have recovered for it, from it. That's good. There are still people out there that uh, want to good, do good for others, and that's uh, that's wonderful when we see that. I mean, you you see the stories on on the on the few stories that we see on that. that I don't think the media likes to grab hold of stuff like that. Um, you're not going to see that on the news. Or, excuse me, I apologize for calling that news. <laughs> it's opinion. It's opinion. News is when they tell you what happened, ain't it? Yeah. Ain't nobody does that no more except my wife. She'll tell me what happened at the house. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> yeah. All right, well. Uh, Got one more. Oh. Yes. Yeah, we want to definitely uh, pray for our schools. Uh, a lot of them are in indecision on how to proceed going forward, and uh, people are in limbo. Uh, teachers, school folks that work at the school, whether it's uh, lunch folks and, and uh, ladies that help out with the special need kids, the nurses, principals all all these folks that uh, that's their livelihood and it's it's uh it's been really rocky this year and also the parents that are trying to stay up and keep the kids taught at school they might find out that the teacher wasn't joking about their kids but it you know I know, I know. I was, I was, uh, I, I was one of them kids what needed lots of whoopings. <laughs> but, but seriously, and also we want to lift up our kids, our children. I mean, how disrupting is this for our youngsters? It's, you know, they they're used to going to school and seeing their kids, and then getting out for summer. And now it's like you don't get to wait for summer. Get out. Well, uh, your mommy's gonna be teaching you at home, or your daddy. All right, well, let's just pray for our whole whole world. First thing we're going to do is, is uh, lift up the folks on this list. We went through, named them. God already knows who they are. He knows what they need, and we're just going to lift them up. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, with petitions, Lord. We have all these all these names of these folks that have been mentioned here tonight. We, we probably got some folks that ain't been mentioned, Lord. Um, Maybe folks in here that have unspokens that didn't want to say anything. Uh, a lot of times we put our own needs aside because we're focused on the ones we love, Lord. But you know every detail. You know every intricate part.
part of everybody in here's life. Lord, I ask for healing, restoration. I ask for uh, just everything that, that we need, Lord, whether it's healing in our, in our body, our mind, our soul, our spirit, our finances, our marriage. Lord, whatever it is, Lord, uh, just in our relationship with you, whatever that healing is, Lord, I ask you to heal it. I ask you to uh, just wrap everyone in your, in your loving arms, Lord. We ask you to protect the people that we mentioned on here. Lord, we ask you to keep them out of harm's way, and we just ask you to let them know you got them in your hand. Lord, we just want you to be recognized for who you are. We thank you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for sending your son to die on the cross so that we can enter into your presence and talk to you like we are, Lord, where we can come to you like a, like a child goes to his good, good father and talks to him face to face, Lord. We thank you for loving us that much. We ask all these things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Ain't got nothing? Okay. Well, I can get to it on here, I'm pretty sure. I'm so glad that I brought my expandable Bible tonight because guess who didn't get his glasses? <laughs> That'd be me, all right. But it's okay. If you have your Bible, you can uh, follow along with these scriptures. Um, one of them is, is, is pretty lengthy. That's probably why he's typing. We do have the first one up there. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, and I'm using the uh, uh, English Standard Version. Um, the only reason I'm not using the new king is because I ain't figured out how to punch that one into this thing yet. And it, it starts out as the opening of this because the actual preface to the message is that take heart and fear not. God doesn't didn't create us with us to have a spirit of fear of confidence and boldness. In fact, he gave us his spirit. Second Timothy, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. He put that spirit in us. The power comes from him. The love, it comes from him. Self-control it comes from a close and meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ. In doing that, he empowers us to have self-control, to be able to turn the other cheek when everything in us says fight back. We, we have it in our nature that when somebody wrongs us, we want to wrong them back a little bit harder. But God tells us, to draw near to him and have self-control. You, you see, when, when we show forgiveness and we, we're kind to people who are not kind to us, it makes a statement so loud even the unbeliever can hear it because they see it, they know that that's not of man. You got... You're still working on Psalms 91, ain't you? Yeah. Do you? That wasn't the one I had up there, though, was it? It was 1 John uh, 4 and 8. In 1 John 4 and 8, it says, Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Or again, he's our source. It's, it's that love that gives us the ability to forgive others, to take our mind off ourselves a little bit instead of always being, being stuck on me, 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 where we start doing like Jesus did when he was hanging on that cross. 
And I know you've heard Brother Sean, you've heard other preachers say it. It was not the nails that held him there. It was love that held him on that cross. As he was dying and being, I mean, punished to an extent that would, that would sicken you to see. And yet he's calling out, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I don't reckon I'll ever achieve that kind of love. But I should strive for it. Make every effort. And the only way you're going to do that is with a relationship with the Savior and knowledge of what the Bible says. And, and when we talk about times in, in this land we live in and, and in this world that we live in, they're hard. They're ugly. They're raw and they're real. They're unsettling. They bring fears from places we didn't even know you could be scared at. Fears for our children, for our grandchildren. We see all this going on and, and uh, it's unsettling. Every time you turn around, you hear another rumor starting about this and that. I, I, they've said some of them things on there that uh, running around in media and everywhere else, people going around saying it. And, and you're, you're like, man, what, what do you even believe? You have, you have somebody die of cancer. The death report says COVID-19. We had the, the miraculous thing about 2020 is nobody has died from anything else in this country but COVID-19. All other, all other diseases are, are cured. They're healed. No, they're not. We're being lied to. But if we go back to the Word, we should expect that. Ephesians. We got your armor on? Armor's in the Word. Are we studying our Word? We're, we're, being, we're on the road to being persecuted in this nation. It's been happening around the world forever. And can you imagine the value that a Christian that lives in Iran has for the Word? He stakes his life on worshiping and studying the Bible. We, we can't even let go of a football game. Well, I can now, I can guarantee you. All them people that disrespect a country that was built on Christianity and Christian principles and all the men and women who died in every war here are being disrespected when they do that. They don't, I won't support them in any way, shape, or fashion. I'll pray, pray for them. They can go get a real job. They're all in good shape. Go join the army. We see this stuff going on in our world. And like I said, it, it can be scary. And, and uh, you know, when you're talking to folks and they've, they've just got a bad diagnosis from the doctor and they're scared. You want to give them words of comfort. You want to be able to be there for them and reinforce them to encourage them. But I got news, and it's good news. Through all the things that our Lord did for us, if you're a Christian and you're sick and you pray for healing, 100% of the time, you will be healed. You will be healed. It's not a, is he going to heal me? Oh, yes, he's going to heal you. You know him? You got the blood of Jesus on you? You're going to be healed. Now, we, we should make every effort to stay here on this earth and finish what he's got for us. But one day, he will heal us. It will heal us. When, when, uh, when my nephew died and I got his liver, I had a huge sense of guilt on me. And God revealed that to me. One day he just told me, Troy, Dwayne is healed. He's up here with me. He stubs his toe on the road. He's kicking gold. 
you're just patched up. You still got dying to do. When I, when I realized that in my heart, took the guilt away. And I strive to be jealous of those. I see Miss Mimi, no fear, fearless, fearless because she knew Jesus. She knew that God had that. She's healed today. We, we want to continue to pray for her family because the pain of, of separation is, is real and it's hard. But even then, we're consoled in knowing that when someone leaves us, that they go straight to the presence of a loving Savior. And we're not just strangers in heaven. We've been adopted. God is our Father. We've got another one in 1 John 4.18, I believe. Here's one I really like. There is no fear in love. You see that on the battlefield. You see that when a police officer puts his life on the line to, to help someone and bring them out of danger. His love for a fellow man will cause him to lose all thought of self-inflicted hurt or, or inflicted hurt by the enemy. He loses sight of that. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. For well, fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected, perfected in love. In this particular verse, perfected means brought to to fulfillment, to be complete and whole in love. But not only does love cast away fear, but there is no fear in love. It helps to perfect that love. When, we, when we're going through something that we greatly fear we're going to reach out to God if you're a believer and it gets tough you're going, to, you're going to find out that even though you're in the midst of the storm and you don't like being there you won't out you, you go through it and you draw nearer to God and when the storm has rolled away and you look back you'll say boy I don't ever want to do that again but it was worth it I have a relationship with God that's stronger than it's ever been, and it was worth it. What was the next one we had, Dale? Oh, this is it here. This is Psalms 91. This is David. David's talking to God. And God's talking to David. This is ver starts in verse 1 of chapter 91 in the Psalms. Again, this is English standard. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust, For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you under his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. You know, as, as, we, as we look at that and we read that, that verse, and there, there's David had been in some really uh, tough predicaments. Uh, you know, he, he wasn't perfect, but he was a man after God's own heart because he truly remorsed when he sinned against God. 
it broke his heart. And as he goes through and he's, he's uh, talking with God and he's, he's going into, the, the, into this and just letting the Lord speak through him, he's talking about that he knows that God is his, is his, first he knows it's the almighty God and that that's his refuge and his fortress. When he went out to see Goliath that day, he wasn't worried about how big Goliath was because he knew God was the one doing the fight and he was just the one out there telling the Goliath about it. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Do you trust God? To trust him means that I love him. I know that he's got me covered. Trust also will swat away fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of what's happening next. All we need to know is that God's got this. So if you've been, if you've been fearing over things, I just relax. God's still in control. He calls the shots. And everything's going to turn out just like he wants it. As we go through hard times, it's not like he got up one day and said, I want uh, Donna to go through hard times. I was talking about my wife over there. But either way, it's not like he got up and said, I want anyone to go through hard times. But he tells us in this world we will have trouble. As those troubles come, it helps to make us more complete, more perfected in a better relationship with him. Now I'm going to finish reading this. In his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. Everybody want to know what a buckler is? It's a smaller shield. Just another shield. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence, oh, we got pestilence, that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked because you have made the Lord your dwelling place the most high who is my refuge no evil shall be allowed to be befall you no plague come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will, del I will deliver him, I will protect him. Because he knows my name, and when he calls me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. This, is, this is, has to be God talking to David. I will rescue him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Because he knows my name. That 16? Okay, we got through that. He, uh, I'm blind right now. We're doing all right. But uh, as we go through that, and he's just constantly reinforcing, uh, talking about stepping on an adder. Y'all know what an adder is, right? Just another snake. Yes. Some words I don't uh, I don't know what they are until I 
dig into them a little bit deeper. But that's part of that's part of study. As we go through the word, we see something we don't understand, we look it up. Because if I skip over something like a buckler, everybody's like, Well, I don't know what a buckler is, but he, he had one. Well, just had to know. On the next one, we're at is it Romans eight twenty eight? And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. That means even the bad things you go through, the good things, bad things, all things that you go through work, work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, those are his people. We're his people. If you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you're his people. And, and uh, all things work together for good. Somebody can wrong you. And God will turn it around and you'll find, you'll find out that you were really blessed. It was meant for ugliness, but it got took out. Because that's how God works. He fixes stuff. Which one are we at now, Dale? All right. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? This is another one of the Psalms, 27.1. And he's talking about the Lord and how that He's his light, his salvation. And he's saying, with that, knowing that, why should I fear? Who shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? If you have the Lord in you, be afraid of no one. Even if someone took your life and you have a relationship with Christ, all they did was give you a better place to live. When you look at it and understand it the way that it is, it takes fear away. You know, I, I think that where, where I have fears and concerns has to do more with people that I love. When I have to wonder, do they have that, that relationship with God that I have? Because the pity... And the shame of this world is that Christians have done a poor job. We've done a poor job at home teaching our kids. You see, I know that because I'm guilty. We've done a poor job of limiting what our children are exposed to some of the stuff that comes on TV, someone would have come into my house when I was a child, my daddy would have thrown them out on their butt. And let, let we, yet, we let the TV sit there and bring that trash in our house. We fail. We fail. We let down our guard. Don't get me wrong. Satan is sly. He knows how to chisel on you. He knows how to find a crack. He knows how to irritate it. If he sees a wound, he's coming back with a bucket of salt. If he sees a fracture, he's bringing a wedge. He is here to destruct and cause destruction on us. He walks about as a, as a lion looking for who he's going to devour next. And we're all looking mighty good to him. So he's, he's going to kick it into high-speed attack. When you, start try, when you start drawing closer to the Lord, if he ain't bothering you and he ain't causing you strife, you're right where he wants you. You ain't making a difference. But when you start moving in the right direction, he's going to cause you some problems. 
because that's the way he does. You see, to him, a Christian that's not doing what God told him to do, it's a win for Satan. That disobedient child has not done what his father told him to do, and I can use a silent Christian as much as I can use a hell-bent demon to send people to hell because that's ultimately his goal. He wants company when he's cast into the lake of fire. We're going to have to speak up, people. We're going to have to put this word in our heart because that persecution is coming. It's coming to this place. Take heart. God's got it. He's got it. We've got to do our part. When you get up in the morning, just think to yourself. It, it'll, it'll, help, it'll help you keep focused on this. What if there were no Bibles? And there may soon come a day where the ones that are here are having to be smuggled. They come into your house and take your Bible away. They don't kill you. They leave you there defenseless if you don't know the word and you have family members that come to you and you don't know how to show them what God says, what God will do for them, or to bring comfort to the sick, to bring healing to the brokenhearted, to encourage someone who's fixing to pass from this earth if you don't have that word in you, you're going to be wishing you did. I know that as this nation has drifted further and further away from God, what we're seeing now, as angry as it makes us, we've asked for it. We've allowed it. And we're being drawn closer to the Lord because of it. Because he works all things for good. What was the last one I had on there? There it is. You already got it up. You the man. May God of hope, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. As believers, we're never hopeless. The doctor can come out of your room and tell your family is hopeless. And you can be in there preparing to see Jesus. Tell them, oh, are you kidding? This is what he's been hoping for. I have a friend that when he passed, he had his family around him right up until he drew his last breath. They, they started out that evening singing hymns until he didn't have the energy to make a word, but he was smiling ear to ear. He knew where he was going, and he was looking forward to the trip. That's where we want to be in our relationship with God because I promise you ain't none of us getting out of this alive unless he comes back while you're here on earth. And even then, you'll have to wait till the ones that pass before you go because they're going first. But I hope that I've brought encouragement to folks. I, I hope that I've brought to you the Word in a way that it touches your heart and encourages you to study the Word, to love your fellow man, to not be scared. We ain't scared because God's on our side. I read the end of the book, folks. He wins. <laughs> I thank y'all very much for, for coming tonight and uh, just bro, Brother Mike, could I ask you to close us out in prayer?
Amen.